Gene editing systems have opened up a host of new ways to explore how life works and also have the potential to help improve human health, produce better crops, and fight environmentally damaging pests. In this series, three young scientists from the University of Otago's Department of Biochemistry tell us about how they plan to use CRISPR gene editing in their diverse research projects. Um, I'm Gemma McLaughlin. I always you know, just get my lab mates to bring in any wasps they see. Yeah, and you can just store them in the fridge. These guys I, um, I use for mating purposes. So we collect all the um, queens from a nest at the end of the season. This is a, it's a jam it's jar. A jam jar. <laughs> yeah, I use these when I see queens at my house. I just put them in a jar and bring them into work. Yeah, sort they just well, they just go to sleep and they just sort of for, stop. For months? Yeah, they can. Well, the, the queens hibernate for months. Usually everything else just dies out. Invas invasion biology has always been my thing, and it's a big problem in New Zealand, as we all know. <laughs> and then it's like, well, wasps are everywhere. They came here accidentally. It was just hibernating queens in World War II plane parts. So they've just done so well here that it's, it's quite detrimental to other native species. So you, you're getting rid of wasps oh, genetically. by... Genetic methods. Genetic methods. Yeah. Gemma and her supervisor Peter Dearden are looking into how to make a gene drive to eradicate invasive wasps from New Zealand. A gene drive consists of some bits of RNA that can alter or silence a specific gene, plus the genes that encode the CRISPR-Cas machinery. The genetic modification uses CRISPR to insert and spread through a population at higher than normal rates of inheritance. So um, yes, they've done it in mosquitoes, so they just had to inject a female and then the effects they wanted were expressed in all their offspring. Inside the cells of an organism that inherits one copy of the gene drive, the whole drive copies itself onto its partner chromosome so that the genome now has two copies of the gene drive. In this way, the change is passed on to up to 100% of offspring. So if I did that, that would be really effective because then I could just inject a queen and have all the offspring do what I want as opposed to having a queen injecting every egg she lays within the small window before they develop too much right. as well. So you're targeting, yes, the, mm. the cells that make the eggs mm -hmm. rather than the eggs themselves. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to target this gene called double sex, which is like sex determination in wasps. To begin with, Gemma will visit a lab in the USA to learn the techniques they are using to introduce this system into bees. What I'd like to do is the form, the method called non-homologous end joining, which is pretty much you make a double strand of break in the DNA, you cut out a section and then you join the ends back together. And um, for that, I want to target this exon on chromosome 3 and for the double sex gene that produces males. And so just cut that out so it produces a stop codon instead. So a stop codon means that's the end of translation. We stop making proteins from here. So then it just makes, it doesn't make males at all. So eventually then you're only having females, they run out of males to reproduce with and so they eventually die out. There are many obstacles to overcome before a gene drive could be possible for wasps. It's a bit harder with wasps because they're not a model organism and we don't have their genome online accessible. We're um, working on that. Now. Oh really? It hasn't been sequenced yet? Well it has, Reese, just by some postdocs in the other room <laughs> over there. Oh, they're, they're excellent! Doing. We need to understand their fertility genetics better and learn how to grow wasps in the lab. <laughs> okay, so this is the first layer of a wasp nest. Look, this is the pistol here that they attach to sometimes trees are usually underground but that's the first layer that the queen makes all on her own she flipped over it's just little cells they have really small cells at the start because she's just trying to produce as many workers as she can and once she's got enough then they take over and build the rest of the nest and then she just becomes a baby factory but most important of all we need to look at all the benefits and hazards that a gene drive could bring and decide as a country whether this is a path we should take. It does have multi-generational effects and um, the biggest fear is, is if it would escape to another country. It's a valid concern, it's you know, something that should be looked into. I mean we shouldn't just release a whole bunch of genetically edited wasps into the wild, so we are going to look into things. <laughs> <laughs>